This is Greg Shaw speaking to you from the Vox Records garage. When I'm in the desert, I listen to Randy Love on KXCI Tucson, Arizona. A couple of weeks ago, you missed the Cavern Club celebration of the release of a new 45 by 10 Tons of Lies, one of our more popular local bands. Free records were given to the crowd, and there was a thrilling jam session featuring rich coffee from The Forgiven. The record, titled Seeds of the Next Season, is on Vox Records, and is part of a large batch of new releases, which I guess I might as well run down for you. Uh, foremost among them is the various artist album, Beast from the East, about which your host Randy Love can surely tell you more. It features eight new bands from the eastern part of the country, and a pretty wild cover, too. Then we have the debut album by SS20, who I hope you've been hearing on this show. They're one of my favorite bands in that they really capture the 60s spirit of improvisation and, and inspired spontaneity. The album is called Dream Life, and mark my words, this group is worth finding out about. There's also an EP, which is promotional only, but you can probably find it in some of the hipper stores, which has some outtakes from the SS20 album and some tracks where they jammed with Sky Saxon. If you're into the seeds, you might want to hear that. Along with 10 Tons of Lies, Box has a new 45 out by the Laughing Soup Dish called Teenage Lima Bean. This band hails from New Jersey, which must be why their minds are so warped. Whatever the explanation, this is one bizarre record. And coming very soon is a 45 by the Leopards called Psychedelic Boy, which has become a local classic thanks to Rodney Bingenheimer's airplay over the last year, although people haven't been able to get it on vinyl until now. The Leopards are one of the best up-and-coming bands in L.A., and we hope to have an album by them soon. Uh, we also hope to be sending them out to Tucson. Well, the Pandoras returned from their national tour a couple of weeks ago, and apparently it was quite successful. The album on Rhino is selling better than ever, and rumors have been flying around that the girls have been receiving offers from major labels. The latest is that they've almost signed an eight-album deal with Elektra. How about that? If anyone can turn garage music into an indelible stain on the national map, it's these girls. The Music Machine, one of the larger clubs here, has started a Psychedelic Monday series of shows once a month. They've had three already, and it looks like it'll become a great ongoing institution. They bring in light shows, videos of old 60s footage like shindig shows, wild decorations, and of course music, six to eight live bands, ranging from hardcore psych rock to acoustic folk psych to Hendrix tributes to who knows what. It's an interesting concept and a welcome compliment to the more garage-oriented scene at the Cavern Club. Speaking of the Cavern, we've expanded the scope of the club by making Friday nights a haven for the mod scene. There are more than 20 mod bands in Southern California, plus plenty from the East Coast and England that come through town occasionally. For instance, the Jet Set from England are going to be spending a month or so on the West Coast in July, and they'll be playing at the Cavern. San Diego is a particular mod stronghold, but there are Soul and Scooter Boys all over the landscape, and since the Bullet closed three years ago, they haven't had a scene to call their own. The interesting thing about mod bands is that many of them are a lot more progressive than their fans, incorporating influences from 70s punk, 60s garage and psych, hardcore, and a lot of other odd influences. That's a, that's a large part of the reason why I decided to devote the cavern to supporting this scene, because up to now I thought that Mod was kind of a, a dead end, but some of the bands around are pretty interesting. At the same time, Vox is launching a new subsidiary label called Pal Records. If you read that upside down, it says Mod. Uh, this label will be recording some of the better local Mod bands and working in cooperation with Mod labels in England, such as Hilo, uh, which is run by Anthony Minnell of Squire and we'll be introducing American bands to the British mods and vice versa. I'll keep you posted on how this project works out. And that's the news for now. This is Greg Shaw signing off. The 60s revival scene has had to go through its growing pains. When it began, it was record collectors who only wanted to hear authentic 1966 garage music. I knew in time that that would evolve, just like in 1965 and 66, the kids of my generation wanted to hear the Beatles and very simplistic Mergy Beat music. Two years later, they were getting into really far out acid rock, and it was just the process of growing up a little bit and discovering psychedelic drugs, and as for the musicians themselves, becoming confident enough with their instruments to take on more, more challenging things. So I opened the Cavern Club uh, about a year and a half ago, basically because there was no place for the bands in my scene to play, and I felt it would be great if we had a little place that was our own and a scene could take shape and people could come and socialize and play the music in a supportive atmosphere. And it's worked out great because there were maybe a dozen bands at that time that were part of the scene. Now there are closer to a hundred that have played the Cavern Club and are somehow in orbit around this scene and drop in once in a while to play. And each band has their own following, and the connections are tenuous, but it's creating a broader based scene. And without this club, it couldn't have happened. Um, our bands play the other clubs once in a while, and there's usually no one there, or they, they put them with a band that's wildly inappropriate, and, and nobody understands it. Plus, the other clubs are all over 21 now. This is the only club in L.A. 
It's not the only one, but at the time we opened it, it was where people under 21 were welcome. That's because we don't have a bar. We're not doing it to make a lot of money. We're doing it to put on the music. And You're bringing in a lot of national acts coming. Well, we don't bring them in because we don't we don't have enough money to offer them anything. But while they're touring, they usually make a point of playing the Cavern Club because it's the only way they can play to their underage fans. Mm -hmm. But we've had the Vipers and we've had bands from the East Coast, the, the Cheap Skates and Mod Fun and Green from Chicago and the Reactions from Ohio and. Bands from all over the place. We had the legendary Golden Vampires from Germany. They were just in America on holiday, and, and it was their biggest desire to play the Cavern Club, so we found a place for them. Um, the Miracle Workers from Portland. Um, anybody who's passing through, uh, we, we like to put them on there. Um, it's, it's a different kind of club. It's, um, it's the kind of club I've always liked the best, and that's why I set it up that way. It's, it's a scene. Uh, it's like CBGB's used to be. It's like The Mask used to be here in L.A. It's like, um, it's where a scene begins, where we're people get together to pursue something that is kind of unknown and it, it's not getting uh, any kind of support anywhere else. But it'll, it'll grow out of this and, and if there were more clubs around it probably already would be catching on any other clubs.